figuring out the GCF from polynomials. So, we're going to start with some things that you wouldn't be able to factor, because we've already talked about factoring the difference of squares and factoring quadratics. But we're going to start with um, things that you wouldn't be able to factor that way, that you can only factor the GCF out of. So if I have something like this, 3 and um, plus 3, That's not a quadratic, so we, we can't really talk about factoring it other than to pull out the greatest common factor, which just means we look at each term. So 3n is a term and 3 is a term. We try to figure out what they have in common. What do they have in common? 3. And so we basically reverse the distributive property. We say 3 times, and then I look at each term, 3 times what would give me 3n? And 3 times what would give me 3? 1. So I have 3 times n plus 1. I'm just pulling out that greatest common factor. So, um, That's it. Yeah? You don't put the 3 in parentheses? Like you could. It wouldn't matter. You certainly could put that in parentheses if you wanted to. It wouldn't make a difference. Um, if I have a variable in common, so let's say I have something like 5n squared plus 7n. I can also factor out that variable. If I look at 5n squared, that's my first term, and 7n, that's my second term, 5 and 7 are prime, so they're not going to have any factors in common. But n squared and n do have a factor in common, which is n. So I pull out an n, and again, you could write that n in parentheses if you wanted to. And then I look back at my first um, what's the term? expression here. So n times what would give me 5n squared? 5n. And then n times what would give me 7n? Seven. 7. So I factored out a greatest common factor, which in this case is a number. Wouldn't you be able to do, um, like, factor out the n squared part out of 7n? So you would just have 5n to the third power plus 2n, and then you would, like, what we do. Because I'm kind of confused what, what we're doing with this last. So I'm taking this, right, yeah, um, taking this expression here, and I'm trying to figure out what factors are common between each term in the expression. The only thing that these two have in common is n. That's the only thing these two have in common. Then, in order to write my second expression, my factored form, we don't usually say simplified form. We usually say the factored form. Um, I just... Put that n out front, because that's what we had in common. And then I think, what times n would give me 5n squared? So this times this has to equal this. right? And then this times this times this has to equal this. I said that, and that wasn't really what I was asking, but like, compared to what I thought we were doing, like what we were doing yesterday, was we were taking like the um, an equation and then putting it into two, like. Um, right. Remember what I said at the very beginning. You're not going to be able to factor these first examples. There's no way. There's no way to factor this because, I mean, there is. We can factor the greatest common factor. But we can't factor it like we've been factoring quadratics because it doesn't have those three terms. And it's not a difference of square. So we can't use like, there's no like reverse FOIL factoring for this. It doesn't have all three terms. The only thing you can do here is factor out the greatest common factor. That's all we can do. There's no like, I, because there's no factors of zero that add up to seven, right? 
there's no factors of zero. Well, that's only sort of true, but it's just an easy way to think of it, right? When we are missing this last term, we're not going to try to factor this as a quadratic. Okay. Same thing here. I can't. There's no reverse FOIL factoring that would give me something without a squared term. All right. Let's take a look at another one. What if I had juice? What if I had something like this? 6y squared plus um, 15y. So I'm just, again, I'm just looking at this for greatest common factors. And the reason is because I don't have all three terms. But even if this, even if we were practicing factoring quadratics, now I'm getting a little bit off track, but even if we were practicing that, if you have a quadratic that looks like this, that has two terms, the best way to factor it is just to pull out the greatest common factor. As long as one term is the y squared term and the other term is the y term. If I have a quadratic that has two terms where one of them is a constant, that's what we did yesterday. That was a difference of squares. That's the only way to factor a two-term quadratic where one term is a constant. Okay. And then that kind of reverse FOIL process, when we reversed FOIL, that's when we had a quadratic with all three terms. And we will eventually get back to that. But I just wanted to review this factoring out the greatest common factor first. So y squared and y we're automatically going to say, let's look for a greatest common factor. That's what we're going to say when we see a quadratic with a y squared and a y, or an x squared and an x, or an n squared and an n, whatever it may be. And in this case, the y is common, but we also have a 3 in common. Exactly. So I could pull out 3y. And then I'm going to say 3y times what would give me 6y squared? Two, two, times 2y. Because 3 times 2 is 6, and y times y is y squared. 3y times what will give me 15y? Five. Right? 3y times what? Five. 5 is 15y. Oh, because y times y is y squared. Yeah, if I had 5y here, 3y times 5y would be 15y squared, which is not what I originally had. So are you using um, distributive properties? Because usually you can't do 3y times 5 because they're not the same thing. They don't always have same You're thinking of adding, right? I can't add 3y plus 5, but I can multiply 3y times 5. That's totally fine, right? 3y times 5 is 15y. That is totally fine to do. If I, if I were somehow adding, like right here, I can't add 2y plus 5, because they're not like terms. So you're right, I can't combine like terms with addition or subtraction. But I, I mean, I, I can only combine like terms with addition or subtraction, right? Instead of the reverse. But when multiplying, that's totally fine. I could multiply like 16xyz times 5nmw, and I could find the product of those two things, even though they're totally not like terms. But I can't add them if they're not like terms. So 3y times 2y would give me 6y squared. 3y times 5 would give me 15y. So I factored out the greatest common factor. Just pulling out whatever they have in common. Now let's start to look at some slightly more complex. What if I had something like this? 
this looks a lot more complicated. It's not like anything that we've practiced that reverse FOIL factoring, but we can <coughs> still do the greatest common factor type of factor. I have three terms here. One, two, three. So let's look at what each term has in common. I have a 16, an 8, and a 20. All of those have a 4 in them. So I know that I'm going to be able to pull out a 4. Now I'm going to look at my x's. I have an x squared, an x, and then nothing here. So can I pull out an x? Mm -hmm. No, because this term has no x's. Okay, let's look at the y's. I have y to the third, y squared, y to the third. I can pull out the smallest of those, which is y squared. So that's part of my greatest common factor. And now I have z, z squared, and z to the fifth. So I can pull out, again, the smallest of those, which is just z. So I can pull out the greatest common factor of 4y squared z. That's my greatest common factor. Now I have to look back here and figure out, okay, 4y squared z times what would give me 16x squared y to the third z? So I'm going to look at that in separate pieces. First, I'm going to look at 4 times what would give me 16, which is 4. I need an x squared here, and I have no x's here, so I need that x squared in this term. I have to figure out y squared times what would give me y to the third, which is just a regular y. And then z times what would give me z, which is 1, which I don't really need to write, because 1 times this is just the same thing. So 4y squared z times 4x squared y would equal 16x squared y to the third z. You guys see that? Yeah. Correct. Next term, plus. 4 times what would give me 8? 2. Again, no x here, but I have x there, so I need that x. y squared here, y squared there, so that's just times 1. z times what would give me z squared? That's just a z. So I've got 2xz. 4y squared z times 2xz would give me 8xy squared z squared. I multiplied that out. Okay, last term. 4 times what would give me 20? 5. Five. Five. There are no x's anywhere, so I don't need an x. There's a y squared here times y would give me y to the third. Right? y squared times y is y to the third. And then z times z to the fourth would give me z to the fourth. And that's the factored form of that, pulling out that greatest common factor. Now this is kind of just like a, a really weird, complicated example. You won't really see these types of problems other than when we're practicing factoring out the greatest common factor. So let's now shift gears back into what we've been looking at. What if I had something like this? 11x squared minus 22. No, not 22, sorry, 44. 11x squared minus 44. So when you see this, your brain should be going, difference of squares, difference of squares, difference of squares because we have the x squared term minus another term with no x at all, right? A constant term is what we call it. And that's the pattern for difference of squares. We have the squared minus the constant. Now, we saw on your homework yesterday, this doesn't always have to be a constant. It could be like y squared. But typically, when you're factoring difference of squares, you're going to see squared minus constant, or something like that. And when your brain sees that pattern, it should be like 
alarm bells should be ringing difference of squares. Difference of squares, difference of squares, difference of squares. But the thing about this particular difference of squares is it's a lot easier to factor if we first factor out a greatest common factor. Which is 11. Yeah, which is 11. So if I first pull out my 11, 11 times, so 11 times what would give me 11x squared? x squared. 11 times what would give me the minus 44? So I know it's going to be minus. Four, four. So 11 times 4 gives me the 44. Notice I'm just keeping these the same. Sometimes you'll actually pull out a negative. We're not going to do that right now, but in which case, like a negative times a negative would be a positive or whatever. So you do have to pay attention to the signs. Now, this is a lot nicer difference of squares to factor. I, I'm much happier factoring this than I was factoring this. I can't forget about my 11, so I leave that up front. And then I factor this as a difference of squares x plus 2, x minus 2. Okay. If I had just tried to factor this, it would have been like the square root of, uh, of 11x plus 2 square roots of 11 times the square root of 11x minus 2 square roots of 11, which is just kind of gross. Like no one really wants to have all those square roots in there. This is much more elegant and clean and um, mathematical. Okay. This is the answer that we want to get. And we get there by first factoring out our greatest common factor. And we can do that with the other type of factoring we've been doing. So if I had something like 7x squared plus... Um, 35x plus 28. So first I'm thinking, wait, factors of 28 that add up to 35? And then I'm thinking, no, no, wait, because there's a 7 in front of the x squared. So I'm, I'm going to look for a greatest common factor to see if I can simplify this. And there is one which is 7, so I'm going to pull it out. 7 times what would give me 7x squared? No, oh, that's just x squared. 7 times what would give me 35x? 5x. 7 times what would give me 28? 4. Now I can look at this and go, oh, factors of 4 that add up to 5. Don't forget I have a 7 out here x plus 4, x plus 1. And now I've fully factored this whole thing by pulling out that 7 first. Yeah. If you can pull out a greatest common factor, it's really important to do that as your first step because it just makes everything else in your life so much easier. Your whole life will just suddenly be light. Out your greatest common factor. Well, maybe I can't really promise that, but at least this problem is a lot easier when you pull out the greatest common factor from the first. Yeah, we'd have something like, I mean, you can actually, you could figure out what you'd have by redistributing this. You'd have like 7x plus 28 times x plus 1, or you'd have like x plus 4 times 7x plus 7. But you actually don't even know how to factor something yet that has a number in front of x squared. We haven't really talked about that. You could figure it out because it's like reverse FOIL. So you might be able to figure it out. But there is actually a trick for factoring these. And we'll get into that next week. But for now, if you, so just for now, if you see a number in front of x squared, your thought should be, I'm going to try to factor that out so that I have a quadratic with nothing in front of x squared. Because we've practiced factoring those. All right. That is factoring out the greatest common factor.
guys have questions?